Okay, so here I have a here I have a verbal description of a linear function, and I'm gonna go ahead and graph it. We have Brenda is given fifty tickets to spend at a carnival. Each ticket ride carnival ride rep requires five tickets. Sketch the graph to represent the relationship between rides and tickets. So first thing I want to see is which one is my independent variable and which one is my dependent variable. Because my dependent variable goes on my y-axis and my independent here. So here we have rides require tickets. Rides require tickets. So my rides are dependent on the number of tickets I'm given. So I'll put tickets as my independent variable and rides as my dependent variable. Then I can go ahead and look at my domain. I'm given up to 50 tickets. So that means my number of tickets has to go from 0 to 50. So I'll go ahead and create a table. I did not make this video earlier, so that's why my table is already filled out. But I'll go ahead and show you how I filled it out. So when... So on my x-axis, I want to go from 0 to 50. And then we'll go ahead and plot our points. So let me show you how I fill out the table. When If Brenda gives them 0 tickets, she can go on 0 rides, right? And then the number of tickets is 5 tickets for each ride. So if she gives 5 tickets, she can go on 1 ride. If she gives 10 tickets... She can go on two rides because it's five tickets per ride. So 10 divided by five, two. 15 tickets, she can go on three rides, right? Five, three times is 15. Four, um, if she gives them 20 tickets, she can go on four rides and so forth. So my rides is increasing by one every time my tickets, my number of tickets increases by five. So my my so there are two important things I want to notice. What is my wind step or my start, and what is my rate of change or my slope? So my graph has to begin at zero zero because that's my my zero my start my wind step. So I put a point at zero zero. Then I know every five tickets I give, I can go on one ride. So I will just go ahead and go five tickets, go on one ride. If I give um, 10 tickets, I can go on two rides. I, so if I give five more tickets, I can go on one more ride, which is 15, um, three rides when I get 15 tickets. If I give five more tickets, that's 20 tickets, I can go on one more ride, which will be four, and so forth. So I'm going to keep going, doing that till I get to the end. If I get 50 tickets, I can go on up to 10 rides. So... I'll just go over here to 50 tickets. And remember, tickets is on my x-axis because it's my independent variable. So 50 tickets, I can go up to 20, right? Um, up to 10 rides, sorry. So I'll just put a dot right here. Let me see. So I have a point at 50, 10, which is about right here. -ish. So I have a little pattern. I'm going up one for every five I'm going over. Or for every five tickets, I'm going. So I'll go ahead and just put that there. Ooh, and draw my line. I'm sorry, that's not really straight. Sorry, ten was right, right here. So drawing from my, so that'll be how my graph will be sketched. Let's do another example. It says Ashley's given 10 tickets to spend at the carnival. Each carnival ride requires two tickets. So now we have a change in the number of tickets. Sketch and graph. So the first step you want to do, again, identify which one is your independent variable, which one is your dependent variable. Remember, your independent is your X, your dependent is your Y. So each carnival ride Ride requires tickets, so rise depends on tickets, so rides would be my dependent variable. So you would just want to draw a table, rides would be your dependent, and tickets will be 
you're independent. I already have these drawn out to save time on this video, but you probably should draw the table out and use that to help you draw your graph. We have each kind of a ride requires two tickets. So that means that I'll be for every two tickets, I, I can go on one ride. So if I give zero tickets, I can't go on any ride. If I give two tickets, I can go on one ride. And she, it's tell, it's, I'm told that she's given 10 tickets. That means that my number of tickets has to range from zero to 10. So I keep have, I have to go by twos on my number of tickets till I get to 10. So zero, two, four, six, eight, and I get to 10. So if I give two tickets, I can go on one ride. Four tickets, I can go on two rides. Six tickets, I can go on three rides. Four tickets, I can go on eight tickets, I can go on four rides. And 10 tickets, I can go on five rides because it's two tickets every ride. So I'll just go ahead and plot those points. So every two, so I start at, remember you want to see what your wind step is, where you're starting. Start at zero, zero. And then how much is my, what is my rate of change? So I'm going going up one ride for every two tickets. That's my rate of change. So I will just go, I'll just say, well, I go up one for every two tickets. I can go on one ride every two tickets. So at two, one, I have a point. And four, two, like I said, if I go, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, at two one I have a point. At four two I have a point. So I'm going up one for every two tickets. At six three I have a point. That looks a little taller than four two. Sorry. And you keep going like that with your points and we know we stop at 10 tickets she runs out of tickets at 10 tickets so she can go up to five rides and so if you said 10 divided by 2 you would get 5 so she can go up to five rides and then you would just sketch your graph and draw it You'd want to make your x-axis go from whatever your number of tickets, from zero to whatever the number of tickets you have, she has, that's your domain. And her number of rides will be how wide, because it depends on the number of tickets. So these are two examples of a positively sloped verbal description which means my my graph is going up as I go to the right. I'm going to do one example of a negatively sloped verbal description problem. So first up, from verbal description, you want to identify your independent and dependent variable. Remember, your dependent is your y, your independent is your x. And then you want to know what your beginning is and your rate of change. So here we have a bus is traveling 300 miles at 50 miles per hour. Sketch the graph that represents the number of miles remaining on the trip. So, this is a good, your rate is a good way to know your um, independent and dependent. So, the number, the um, what's in front of per gives you a key clue as to your dependent. And what's behind per 